where the interpretation of history uh, was at the heart of the activity. And that was public history. And there was a public history program at the uh, at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. So it was looking at that uh, curriculum that introduced me to this world of archives, archival practice. And so that it, it resonated with me for a while. Uh, I didn't pursue it right away, but it did stay with me, even though I didn't choose it necessarily, it chose me. Uh, as it as the case was, but it it wasn't completely foreign to me as a concept as well. So <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you get to a you get to a place in your life through a system of accidents and intentions. True. And I'm not sure which predominate at any mm, point. Mm -hmm. So I wonder about that. But it, it makes it interesting. But you hold on to your interest and your passions, and I think they guide you eventually, um, not necessarily accidentally, but intentionally. So what happened in my work, <clears throat> and, and it sort of gets to it, I like to say, well, I don't like to say this, but I do say it, I, it actually pains me to say it, but when I first got into archives, I was a little, I was a little wary of the field, because mm. there were a lot of people who were interested in taking care of records, but not interested in taking care of people. Mm. And uh, if, if I have any philosophy, it's that people people matter most. In the end, you have to think about people more than anything else. And any process that you undertake, any goal that you have, any good that you try to do somehow has to, has to help people. And in, if you're focused so much on what, it, what you think is the work itself, you sometimes lose track of the goal. And my idea was never to lose track of the goal. But I had less of an ability to do that because... I didn't, I didn't work in an archives sitting in one place for very long. I was moving all the time. And I don't mean I was going to room to room and, and stuff like that. I was going out in the field in all of my jobs. My entire career has been field work. It's not entirely field work because it would kind of, kind of be daunting. But it was... Lots and lots of field work. So I was always helping people. I was specifically helping people. I was training them how to be archivists, how to be records managers, how to take care of the information that they had in their, their unions, in their local governments, in their state agencies, and now in their courts. And so it's always been about trying to make people's lives better, even if in, in this case it's really making their work lives better. I can't help people much, uh, much at home. But the other interesting part is that that means I didn't become a teacher. I didn't go into a, a, the field of teaching, but most of my career has been about teaching. Most of my career has been about using my voice and my intellect and occasionally my uh, gestures, which you can't see on this, and to teach people something so they could do something better and to teach them what they needed to know rather than things they didn't need to know but might be important to me or might be the, important to the field. And so this made me grounded. I was always grounded in people. I always, I always know I'm working for the people of New York. New York, in big letters, New York State. Mm -hmm. that's, always been, that's always been my responsibility. So it, that's one way that I think it, I think my job's been good for me. 
because there are lots of people and there's lots of trying to help. Yeah. I don't say I succeed all the time. Well, but that helps you recognize when you do succeed. It's possible. I think so. You have to have that negative space. Okay. Um, speaking from the art background. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Not negative capability. Not negative capability. Okay. <laughs> uh, this comes from a poetry Oh, background. okay. <laughs> Very cool. So what, what, was your, was, what was your first job? What was my first job? Yeah. You're asking me what I was about to ask you? Yes, apparently. Well, let me ask you instead. Because oh, I've okay. just been talking. I've been okay. talking too much. So what was your first job? What was good about it? How did you get into it? How did it destroy your life forever? Well, um, interesting, I think, the story. When I was in graduate school, uh, it was from the year 2000 to 2002, or years, excuse me. And early in my academic career at the University of Albany, I took archives management as a course. And the professor was uh, Philip Eppard, Dr. Philip Eppard. And he had as a class assignment to visit a repository of our choosing. Well, going back to that encyclopedia story, whenever I would look up works of art, whether it be painting or sculpture, uh, it would always seem to have the caption of being at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So when I was tasked with choosing a repository to visit, I thought, what better place to go than the Museum of Modern Art Archives? Mm -hmm. And as it happened, they also had a vacancy, a grant-funded vacancy for one year's work uh, in the archives to uh, take control of the records of the Office of Public Information at MoMA, and to make a long story short, they I uh, ended up applying for the job, they offered it to me, and I took it, and it was one of the best years of my life. Um, as far as how it destroyed me, um, <laughs> I can say the only thing it destroyed was any, any ideas of living anywhere else. Uh, Except I'd, for in this big crowded city, not even this big crowded city, <laughs> but this big crowded island. I love it, Manhattan. It's home, Mahanata. <laughs> Welcome. Where we sit right now on the twenty eighth floor, with barely a view of the Statue of Liberty, and that's merely because it's so foggy out there today. It is foggy today. The temperature must be changing. So. So that was my first job in the field of archives, was working for MoMA, taking control of these records. Um, and it was about, it was one year's work. It was from January 2001 to January 2002. I took a hiatus from the master's program to take the job, but I couldn't not take the job. So You always can't not take the job. Isn't exactly. The story? Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it was really interesting in that when I first met my advisor, Phil Eppard, that I just mentioned before, I told him I wanted to be in New York. I wanted to work for an academic institution that catered to art and design curricula and managing their special collections and, and archives. So... Working at a place like MoMA, although it wasn't an academic institution, it was a respected research institution, the archives and mm. the library there. So it had, I had a, a chance to test that wa those waters, and it proved to be a good, a good fit. Um, you forgot one story. Oh, what was that story? The chuckling. Oh, I forgot. Phil's chuckling. Yes. <laughs> 
He it's chuckled. It's always the most important part of the. And the he story. he actually wished me good luck. So I don't know if he meant it or not, but he wished me good well, luck. Well, I'm sure he meant for you to have oh. good luck, but he didn't uh, expect you to have good luck because he <laughs> thought your goals were too precise. Well, the goals were precise, but I had done so much self uh, examination in terms of where did I want to be. Uh, those again, those vagabond years were hard years, and I felt completely loose and lost. Uh, in a in a side note, uh, I should have I should have thought earlier of saying this, but in a side note, you've reminded me of something. I was Phil Eppert's first student. <laughs> I mean, literally his first student. He took over at the university at Albany as the person running the archives program the year I started. Mm. And I was here like, you know, I'm in my late 20s. I should pretty much have a job by now. I've got to be very serious. I'm going to be very businesslike. And I'm going to go see this man who will who will be the... Uh, the guy who helps all of us who were trying to be archivists. In the end, I I don't know that there were many people who really wanted to be archivists besides me in in my archives classes, but Mm. there may have been others. And so I went to go see him, and I was like, you know, I'm going to go see him. I don't care that I have a terrible cold because I have to go see him. I have to go tell him what I want to do. I have to start learning things right away. And so I went in, talked to him. Don't think I gave him a cold. And uh, he he does remember that uh, to this day. So just don't want to forget Phil. No, can't he's, forget he's Phil. He's important for, for, for those of us. Absolutely, absolutely. Another bit of coincidence was um, I had been given the great advice of uh, volunteering with intent and developing uh, relationships and networking as best as I could as a student, which isn't that easy. But uh, So I set up some informational interviews at repositories that I thought would be the best place for me to go. And even before the MoMA position happened, I had set up an informational interview at MoMA and at FIT and at another uh, two or three locations, and luckily, uh, two of those uh, interviews turned into job opportunities. Eventually, eventually, a little bit of a wait for a effect. little bit of a wait, a little bit of a wait, but worth it. So I must have had a first job. Mm-hmm. So my first professional job, because I was a lucky person. I was also the only person in my class who who had. Um, an assistantship in the field. So I did archives work for my the entire year that I, I worked on my master's degree, and I did this in one year. I was just like, i got to be fast. It's going to be one year. It was a calendar year, not just two semesters. Right, right. And then I'm done, and I'm out of there. And so I, I did that work, but what happened afterwards is actually my first professional job was I was just, I, I just continued my work. I just continued the work that I was doing before, uh, taking in these manuscript collections that we have and uh, organizing them, putting, uh, putting papers in acid-free folders through a process we call refoldering. It's a real word. <laughs> and uh, boxing them up, <clears throat> writing up something about their contents so, so people could find them. But the real, real job, I mean, the job that really gave me sort of much more of a professional point of view was the job as the field archivist for the Capital District Labor History Project, uh, which consisted of me and my supervisor, Don Skemmer. So it's not a very big mm. big uh, activity. But I, um, I was the person who had to go out, make cold calls to to different unions to see if they were interested in giving us their records, interested in in helping document the uh, history of unionism as it was about to disappear. And this was for the University at Albany? It was shrink. 
It was for the in, uh, University of Albany, yes. We, put, we pulled in the records for the University at Albany, but we were associated with the uh, a, a larger labor history project that was based at NYU. Oh. And so I worked with them as well. And so I had that job until I was laid off because it was paid for by a, a state grant that was funded, you know, through some sort.